Welcome to the Strong Opinion Hibs podcast. Tonight we are joined by Reindeer Hot Dog. How are you doing? Not too bad, mate. Not too bad at all yourself. Yeah, doing fine, mate. Really looking forward to this one. Um, and Charlie's joining us tonight as usual. How are you doing, Charlie? I'm good, mate. I'm missing the Hibs like, but uh, nice to talk about Hibs' new sign-in today. So I'm looking forward to it. I am really, I'm really looking forward to this one. As Charlie alluded there, uh, this podcast is um, dedicated to our new sign-in, Elias uh, Melkerson, the Norwegian. Uh, and today, as I said, we're going to be chatting to Reindeer Hot Dog um, to get an insight into our latest sign-in. So you became um, very popular on Hibs Twitter the last couple of days, uh, <laughs> Reindeer Hot Dog, with your insight into Norwegian football. And um, Elias Melkerson, our latest signing. Um, but before we get into that, just what because you became in quite a, quite a wee sensation on the Hibs Twitter, could you give us a little bit of insight uh, to yourself about your football experience? You know, what type of team do you support? How did you gather interest in Norwegian football in particular? Yeah, sure. Um, so, I mean, I'm in my early thirties. So, you know, Championship manager. 0102 was pretty, you know, that was my formative years. I was, you know, I was playing that a lot in my old house where I grew up. Um, and I always like to be slightly different to the mainstream. Um, so I was just interested in the, the Norwegian side of things. Um, and yeah, it was uh, Rosenberg, it was Valerenga, um, all of that. So from a really early age, actually, probably 14, 15, I had, um, you know, some like interest in Norwegian football. Um, you know, one of my favourite footballers, for example, is Raw Strand, um, mm. absolute legend for Rosenberg. Um, so I guess that's where it's come from. But like a lot of other people, uh, Fantasy Premier League, um, you know, I play that. Not particularly well, I'm, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, but then again, um, in the off-season, I was like, what else can we play? Went to the Fantasy Football Scout website, saw the Elite Syrian post, and I thought, yeah, I'll, you know, have a look at that. And then that's how it all began. Um, and I spent the last, what, 18 months, 24 months just looking at stats pretty much every day. Um, so I know like all the names in the league. I know a lot of stats. It's, yeah, it's pretty much well ingrained into my psyche at the moment. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it became very much not an obsession, but sort of like a passion of mine because I do like data and analytics and stuff. And when you combine it with something that you like, I think you... Uh, you know, um, enjoy it a bit more, so to speak. Yeah, totally. I took quite an interest in Norwegian football myself. I actually studied there for six months. I was living in Lillestrøm uh, at wow. Odesson, right next to the stadium, actually. So I went along and I seen quite a few of their games. Uh, so I became a bit of a, a bit of a Lillestrøm fan. So they were, they were a wee bit of a yo-yo team. They went down, I think it's two years ago, but they came back up. Um, even they've got a couple of good games as well. A couple of good players like uh, that Thomas Lenny Olsen and uh, players like that in their team. So the, the, I know I know the level of player in Norway is actually quite good. Um, yeah. So I'm really excited to see that Hibs have actually started to look in that market mm. and that you know we've, we've sort of taken a gamble, as some people would say, looking at Elias Mel uh, Melkerson. Um, obviously, he's a 19 year old striker. Um, he was on loan from his. He was on loan from his parent club, uh, Bodo Glimt, uh, to Ranheim in the second division of Norwegian football. Yeah. Um, what can you tell us about the second of uh, second division or, of Norwegian football? Is it is it a low level? Is it sort of um, similar to perhaps the Scottish Championship? I don't know how familiar you are with that. Yeah, I mean, um, I suppose whenever you drop down from the top tier of any uh, league and you go to the uh, uh, league beneath it, there is going to be a drop off in quality. Um, I think, um, so a really good example of that is, uh, you know, Dwight Gale, excellent mm -hmm. championship striker, comes into the Premier League, can never quite manage it. All the times he's come up, he's never really managed to find his feet. That is the case with some players um, in uh, the OBOS and the Elite Syrian. But I think um, it would be a bit hasty to write off, you know, those players in the lower league, um, mm -hmm. because a lot of them do come up, like, for example, last, uh, last season, your team. Uh, Lillestrøm, they were third for a lot of the time yeah. in, the, in the league and Lerner Olsen's absolutely smashed it this season 
And, you know, Guillermo Anderson, I mean, yeah, he's joined from uh, Rosenberg, so he's not really a championship player, but he's mm-hmm. absolutely been brilliant. Eshpen Garnas has been actually one of the best defenders in the league last season, um, statistically speaking, and, you know, on, you know, on the eye test, so to speak. Um, so they have some really good players. Um, obviously, the flip side of that is Tromso. Um, a few of their players have looked good. Um, obviously, August Mickelson, Eric Kitilano, uh, Thomas Totland, who's recently moved. Um, and obviously, um, uh, Karlstrom, who's gone to Mulder, uh, the goalkeeper. He had an excellent season. Um, so there's definitely quality um, in those teams. Uh, and, you know, I look at these players, especially these youngsters, and it depends how they're playing on the pitch. Like, like it depends on their mentality. Uh, but I, but I do think there's a lot of quality in the OBOS. And I think that's why ultimately a lot of the teams in the elite series will loan out their players to those clubs uh, because they're getting good experience at, you know, a relatively decent level, you know? Um, and I, I suppose maybe the quality um, uh, difference is similar to the Scottish premiership and the championship perhaps. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as you said, I've not really watched much um, of the Scottish Championship, so I don't really, I wouldn't be able to make too much of a, um, you know, um, assumption there. But yeah, there's definitely quality in both leagues. So yeah. Now a lot of Norwegian teams are quite big on their youth academy, and um, Bodo Glint, they kind of came onto the the European scene from nowhere um, when they managed to upset Jose Mourinho's uh, Roma. Yeah. But their academy was voted by the Norwegian uh, Football Association as one of the top three in the country. So what can you tell us about Bodo Glint as uh, a club? Yeah, so um, that sounds absolutely spot on, to be honest with you. Um, they, have, they do have a lot of young talent. Uh, for example, they've had Patrick Bird for, uh, Patrick Berg for a good few seasons, and he has been the absolute engine in that team. He has driven them on to success. He scored that that absolute worldie against Roma in the 6-1 win. Uh, you know, he's been absolutely ever present for the last two or three seasons. And he's still he's still a young guy, you know. Um, but we've got um Elias Hagen, um, who's pretty much seen to be his replacement, and he's a young guy as well, like I think 20 maybe. Um, so he's coming into the team and gonna take up that role in the middle of the pitch. Um, they've got Joel Magisha on the left as well, he's 19. He looks like a real talent. They've got uh, Nordus as well, um, another young guy, I think 19, 20. Um, so they do have a lot of young talent in that squad, as well as having experienced players. Um, so they are a team that if they've got injuries, they're able to bring through a really decent youngster and not really feel the hit that much. Um, and the season before last, I mean, I, I uh, don't know if you're aware, I mean, they won the league at an absolute canter. Yeah, they beat the league, didn't they? Yeah, 103 <clears throat> goals in 30 games the season before last. Um, converted over 25% of the chances, um, you know, over big three chances a game. You know, they've, they were absolutely ridiculous and they sold their entire front three and everybody thought, oh, next season, you know, last season is going to mm-hmm. be tough. And then they've brought in players like Sandra Surley, Ola Solbakken, Eric Bothheim, who was a Rosenberg player. And I don't know what Rosenberg have done with him. They, they loaned him out to Starbeck. And he didn't even really get a, uh, much of a looking at Starbeck, which is absolutely bizarre, uh, you know, absolutely mental to me. And mm-hmm. then Glimpser picked him up and I was like, OK, yeah, this guy is going to be good. And he's just slotted into that system and he's had a great season and he's got his big move, you know. So that's the thing. They're able to get a lot out of their youngsters as well. It's not like they're relying on a big name to come in and absolutely mm-hmm. smash it. They can bring up these youngsters, fit them into their mould and they'll, and they'll hit the ground running. And I think it's sort mm-hmm. of like, say, Liverpool. Uh, you know how Liverpool have a clear ethos? Just yeah. like Man United of, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Everybody knows what they're doing. If you're in centre mid, you know what your role is, et cetera, et cetera. That's what Glimt are. Glimt are a well-oiled machine, you know, and they have the players for the, for the roles that are needed by the club. So they'll never look at getting a big name over somebody who fits their, uh, fits their system better. Um, so that's the kind of team that they are. And I think that's why they're finding their feet and pretty much are the team to beat in uh, Norway at the moment because they have that clear idea of how they want to play football. Mm-hmm. Now, I think the move from 
um, Bodo Glimp to Hibs came about through the connection of our chief executive, um, Ben Kinsell. Uh, ben Kinsell worked at Norwich at the same time that Greg Broughton did, um, who is now the academy director and uh, play, player first team player recruitment officer at uh, Bodo Glint. So there's a little connection in terms of how I think this moves came about, um, and which is, you know, that connection that we now have through Ben Kinsell, starting to look in different markets with some of the some of the connections he ha he's had. Um, so what do you think Hibs fans can expect from Elias Melkerson? He said in his interview, um, hard working goals in his initial interview. Is that something you agree with or is he being... Um, yeah, so I, um, when you look at him play, he is one of the most industrious 19-year-olds I think I've ever seen. Like genuinely, he will put the runs in, he gets into the right positions. He, he never stops moving, basically. And well, you know when Bobby Firmino came to Liverpool, and yeah, yeah. You know, he's that kind of player, but a bit more you know lethal um, in terms of goal scoring. He's able to get the ball and do what he wants with it. You know he's like I've seen a couple of his runs where he'll, he'll get the ball about fifty yards out, and he'll just think, ah, oh, you know, I'm just going to go for a run with this. <clears throat> and he'll just see what he can do with the ball, and then he'll get into a position twenty five yards out, and he's got that arrogance to think, yeah, I'm going to shoot and I'm going to score. And that's what you've got to expect with him. He's going to be arrogant. He's going to be confident. He is going to think that he's the best player on the pitch pretty much at all times. Even if he doesn't like say that. it, that is what he's yeah. going to think. So as long as the Hibs fans are fine with that kind of confidence, um, that's the kind of, you know, that that is the kind of uh, mentality that he has. And I think that's what separates him from a lot of young uh, players at the moment. He has that elite mentality. And he will fancy himself to be, you know what, I'm going to get a lot of goals in this league and I'm going to be a fan favourite and I'm going to smash it. So he may take a little bit of time to bed in because obviously I was, I was looking into the um, stadiums because uh, I think this is a, this is a very, rele uh, very relevant point. Um, obviously in Norway, pretty much everybody's playing on artificial turf. Okay? Um, and I've noticed in the Scottish League, uh, th and this is very interesting that he's joined Hibs because Hibs play on a hybrid glass. Uh, don't you? So it's it's a mixture of real yeah. grass and artificial grass. So I think that is going to help him a hell of a lot. Um, that his home ground, his home pitch, is going to be a mixture of that you know natural grass and the artificial turf that he's used to. Because uh, obviously the pace and the way that the ball moves on an artificial turf is completely mm -hmm. different to you know natural grass. Um, and when Alex Tetty joined Rosenberg from Norwich, when you know, when he rejoined them, um, he basically he he won't play an artificial turf so it's so he didn't really play that many games so you have those players that don't like playing on that whereas he's going to be far more suited to it especially in the obos um you know those those stadiums won't be able to afford you know to have the under soil heating to have the natural grass um and also interestingly as well which is a really i found this and i chuckled to myself um obviously tyne castle park they have um there's a hybrid grass there as well so ideally in the derby he's going to be able to step up and not feel, um, uh, you know, like he's out of his depth on natural grass. Um, but obviously the thing is, um, I think we need to be, be patient because obviously everyone else, other than Hibs, Hearts and Livingston, obviously they all have natural grass. So I think it might take him a little bit of time to get used to playing on a different surface. Um, and he might take a bit of time to be bedded into the team. Um, and also as well, like the new managers come in, maybe you've got a new system that you're going to play. You know, I mean, I was going to ask you that myself. You know, do you think you're going to keep the system that you've got? I mean, I've already read in an interview that he doesn't want uh, three centre-backs anymore. You know, that he wants to be playing two centre-backs and full-backs. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know how that's going to affect the, the midfield and the forward players. If you if you play with three, like three across, like, um, you know, like two wingers and a number 10, and then say someone like, you know, Nisbet or, you know, uh, Malkerson in that centre-forward mm -hmm. role. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, but the thing is, He's a very versatile player as well. So he can play on either wing. He can play in a number 10 and he can play up front. And he will want to be centre forward number nine as much as possible. You know, he's going to want to be banging in the goals. But he's also a team player. So you put him on the left, you put him on the right, you put him behind the striker. Um, when he played for Ranheim, he played in all four of those positions and he scored in every single position that he played in. So, you know, he's able to make an impact wherever he is on the pitch. Wherever he's on the pitch, he's able to make an impact. Um, so I think you've got a very versatile player on your hands. 
Um, and whatever the manager wants from him, I'm very confident that he's going to get to a very high level. He'll comply, yeah. One of the things I really liked about him, just through doing my own research, obviously watching highlights of his goals, he scored the overhead kick, and his team was 2-0 down, he scored the overhead kick. Yeah. And being young and scoring a goal like that, I'd imagine you'd be wanting to get off and celebrate. But the first thing he'd done was run and get the ball and thought, right, ball up and runs we, back, need to yeah. get, we need to get the next goal. Uh, and yeah. that, that really impressed me. I thought, wow, this guy's laser focused on the job in hand rather than sort of, I think a lot of young British talent um, <clears throat> tend to buy into sort of the social media lifestyle and the, yeah. the, off, the, the off the field antics as well. But I, I seen straight away that he was just driven and, and, and focused fully on, you know, winning the match or getting the team back in, in, in the game, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, but no, it sounds uh, really versatile. Like you were saying, uh, obviously, we've got a new manager who's just came in, Sean Maloney. Uh, he spent some time in um, at Belgium uh, mm. when Belgium were ranked the number one official uh, in the World of FIFA World Rankings as the best team. Um, he was the understudy there. And oh, brilliant. Yeah, nice. He, he's wanting to play sort of free flowing attacking football. And he's talked a lot about that. So that's why I think uh, Melkerson's going to be a really good fit. Um, it's good that he can play on the left and right because we've got Martin Boyle who. Has Sensational been, player, yeah. Yeah, he's really been good. really good, but he's been the outball for most of our attacks has came through him. Yeah. And the left-hand side's been particularly weaker. Now, I know we've got the injection of a new player, Chris Muller, as well, who's just joined from Orlando City, but having Melkerson as the option there as well, I think, is going to... It's just... It's that depth that we need and that we've lacked. And I think, from what I'm getting from what you're saying, is the fact he's competitive, so he's going to be wanting to start. I don't think he'll be happy being a sub, which I think a lot of people... And on our end, thinking, right, 19-year-old guy off a young, he's coming in, he's maybe going yeah. to be a squad player. But it's nice to hear that you think, um, from your own research, that you don't think that's going to be the case. He's going to be pushing... He will want to play position. all the time. He will want to be on the pitch as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, in his in his interview um, about leaving Glimpse, he, he did make the point of, you know, mm -hmm. I want to be playing football. I don't want to be on the bench. I don't want to be... Um, you know, just sitting there picking up a paycheck and yeah. putting in a minimal sort of, you know, level of games. And I think with Glimped, the issue with Glimped is they don't really tend to rotate. So whatever team they've got out, it's sort of like Liverpool, like to a point. Right. There are a lot of similarities between Glimped and Liverpool, if you're picking up on that. They are very similar in the way that they approach football. And the thing is with Glimped, they don't tend to rotate. So if uh, Pellegrino signs a new contract, he is their out and out left winger. Ola Sol back in, you know, on the right. They've got Sandra Surley coming back from a cruciate um, injury. Um, they've got Bonifacio up front. They've got um, Magisha. They've got Nordus. They've got a lot of attacking players. And I think Malkerson has just looked at that and gone, I'm just going to be on the bench or I'm going to be loaned out again. And for me, that's not good enough. You know, I should be in the elite series. I should be in a top tier league. And I think that's the thing. Going back to what he said about when he scored the overhead kick. Um, and it's and it and it actually wasn't the only overhead kick that he scored last season. He scored a couple, which is just mm. brilliant. Um, yeah, he picked up the ball, ran it back, wasn't interested in celebrating that. He wasn't about that at all. It was like, no, let's get back and win. And that's the thing he wants all the time, you know. Um, and I think that's one of the exciting things um, that we've got to look forward to. Um, sorry, hang on. Um, that's one of the things that we've got to look forward to about him. Um, that he is going to want to be on the pitch as much as possible. And I think he's going to show that in training. And I think Maloney is going to be looking at that and going, OK, yeah, this guy, you know, maybe, you know, like in this bits, you know, doing all well, up, you know, like doing well up front and feels that competition behind him, you know. And then he's going to start scoring a bit more because I know he's been a bit lacklustre up front this season. He's only scored, I think, what is it, five goals maybe? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, something like that. So I think Malkerson is going to be hot on his heels, but also, as you say, on the left, even if he's on the bench and he comes on for the last 20 minutes and he slots in that left wing, he can make an impact there, you know? Um, so, yeah, I think there's a lot of reason to be excited. Um, it's just giving the lad time, not expecting too much too soon. Um, but I guarantee you, Malcolmson is sitting there going, I, can, I, I should be starting. And he will want to be starting every single game. That is, that is the mentality that he has, you know? Um, and I think that's why I'm really excited about it. And that's why I've kind of jumped on like, yeah, let's go and watch Hibs play and let's really yeah. get some community because it's a really exciting signing, in my opinion. Um, obviously, Muller um, as well is a really good signing um, and Clark and, you know, everyone else that you've got recently, like looking like a really good bunch of players that you're bringing in. 
um, and focusing on youth and that development and that connection that you've got with Glimpse can only be a good thing as well. You know, yeah. uh, there's a lot of talent in Norway and, you know, I think as well, you, you've, you've got to remember similar kind of conditions. I know, obviously, depending on where you are in Scotland, we're not going to have, you know, minus 10 degrees and stuff. But, you know, I know that a lot of English teams don't like going up to play, you know, Celtic, Celtic Park or, you know, Rangers at Ibrox or whatever. They're not going to like doing that. So I think these players coming from Norway, they're going to be like, oh, I'm used to this, but this is actually easier because it's not as cold. It's not as awful weather. Yeah, so the sort of weather conditions oh, that you won't really have to climatise to, where there's perhaps Chris Miller, who's coming for Orlando, will be the complete opposite. Exactly, yeah, exactly that. Cold. Like you remember Larson at Celtic, you know, absolute yeah, yeah. legend. You know, it's it's that kind of thing. So I think there's a lot of reason um, like to be excited. Just we need to give him time. And it, and it may be that it's not until next season that he really kicks on. Uh, it's a bit of an awkward time now. I mean, um, obviously we're we're approaching the split. I think, aren't we? Yeah, we've got the second half of the season to go, so we've yeah. probably got like twelve games or something left to go, and then uh, then it'll be the split. But he's coming in at a good time. There's still a lot of football to be played, and fortunately, we find ourselves in a position where we're still competitive uh, at the top end of the table. You know, we're seven points off a of third place. Yeah, um, which with the new additions and things, you know, I think we can pick pick that up. Um, and hopefully he can help fire us there as well with his goals and um, sort of his ambition. And mm. Charlie, you were going to add a little bit about the international stage. Yeah, yeah. So um, what can you tell us about Elias on the international stage? Has he had much of an opportunity in Norway fold yet or is he still um, on the 21 level or how's, how's that looking for him? So he's representing Norway at three different age groups, um, under 17, 18 and most recently under 20. Um, I mean, we're, look, you know, we're looking at a very good, talented young player and he's been recognised from an early age. Um, he was just over 16 uh, when he was into the under-17s, just over 17 for the under-18s. And obviously the under-20s was about four months ago. Uh, no, sorry, four months before he turned 19. Um, and the under-20s is impressed. He's scored two in three games, um, one against Portugal and the other against Czechia in the under-20 elite league. And that was just in October and November gone. So he's kind of in a bit of a purple patch in terms of he's able to represent his country as well as his club. He's not just a flash in the pan in the um, in the OBOS. He is literally banging in the goals against his peers on the international stage as well. Um, so for me, that's one thing that I'm, you know, I've never really been that interested in that level of football. But I think going forward, um, I think I'll be keeping an eye on that myself. Um, and I, I really don't think it's going to be long until he maybe gets an international call up. The only issue with that is obviously you've got Haaland. <laughs> so yeah, that's, yeah. that's the thing. Sorloff as well, which is quite easy, quite decent as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's got a lot of players that are, you know, better than him up front at the moment for Norway. But again, the thing is, he's versatile. He can play any kind of, you know, position of, um, like across the front line. And I think given time to develop, yeah, I think we've got a player on our hands here. You know, I really do. I, I would not be surprised in a few years' time he becomes a much bigger name than what he is now. One hundred percent. You you mentioned Haaland there. Has he been has there any been like any talk about being the next Haaland or is that just uh, two different players or how how is that looking? Like what's the hype about him in Norway? Well, see, this is the thing you see, Haaland's a special player, isn't he? You know, like Ronaldo, like Messi, you know, like mm -hmm. Salah on another level you know, to a lot of players. So I think it's really difficult and, and maybe unfair to compare anybody to Haaland at this stage. You know, his his goal scoring record is quite frankly scary. You know, it's absolutely mad how many goals he could get. Um, I do think in Norway there is a bit of a buzz about Malkerson. Um, I think if he would have stayed and he would have remained at Glimt and got a few games here and there, um, I think that talk would have maybe subdued a little bit um but he is he is highly rated he is seen as a good young player um, again part of the glimpse academy you know kind of come out of nowhere he's had an opportunity at run home and he's absolutely smashed it you know like he's banging in penalties as well you know mm. he's a 19 year old and he's able to step up and take a penalty i think the issue with him is um he's been outshone by two players in the league um, Oscar Argo, who scored 24 goals, who's had an amazing season. And I think he's recently moved to Augsburg in Sweden. And he, he was a player that I was really quite excited about earlier on in the season. I tweeted quite a bit about him. 
Um, so I'm really not surprised to see him, you know, move up um, a stage. And then you've got Sigurd Haugen as well, who's a very experienced forward and he scored 21 goals for Elson um, in the OBOS. So I think Malkerson was third with 17. So I think if he'd scored maybe like 22, 23, he would have had a bit more buzz about him. Uh, but I think because he's not in the top two and he's not, you know, got into 20 goals, it's, you know, it's kind of diminished, is it? His sort of like hype, but he's 19, you know, course, and, yeah. and he's only just turned 19. So he's been playing the majority of the season as, as an 18 year old. You know, you've got to remember that he, he turned 19, like um, I think his birthday is the 31st of December. So he's, he's literally just turned 19, you know, so as an 18 year old to be scoring that many goals consistently, you know, he he has been turning heads. It's just unfortunate that he's at glimpse mm. just because of the squad that he's got around him. Um, but I think moving to Hibs is seen as a good move. Um, obviously, Hibs are, you know, a big club in the sense of they're in the Scottish Premier League. You know, anybody who's got an interest in football knows who Hibs are. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, not as big as South Dakota Rangers, you know, obviously, but, you know, yeah. we know who Hibs are. You know, we know who, who Hibernian yeah. are, you know. So it's maybe one of those things. No one's really heard of Ranheim and only a few people have heard of Glimt, but then he comes into British football, you know. So I think his profile, his status in Norway has definitely been kicked up a gear or two um, as he's made the move over into a top tier league, you know, mm-hmm. in Britain. So I think it's done his... his um, you know his appeal and his status a hell of a you know like a hell of a lot of good in, you know yeah that's, good. yeah that's real good so so our last two questions are, are mainly like predictions um mm. and we'll not hold you to them if they if they're wrong but um <laughs> what, what's your what's your predictions firstly for Elias at Hibs do you think he'll do you think he'll take that that uh, start and striker role from Nisbet and score 30 plus a season or what do you think for him going forward at Hibs it's a, that's a very good question. It's a very, very, very good question. Um, I Because Nisbet isn't really in a great deal of form, um, I think it's going to go one of two ways. Nisbet basically books his ideas up and he kicks on and he gets more goals in, or he continues to falter. Malkus is given a chance, and if he's given a chance, I think he's going to take it. Um, you know, I think... When he's starting, he's going to get a goal. I think when he's coming on with 20 minutes to go, he's going to be involved. He's never going to be a peripheral uh, figure when he's involved in the game. He's never going to be a bystander. You know, whether that's him getting a yellow card for a silly tackle or, you know, shooting from 35 yards or something, you know, he's always going to be involved in the game. You know, so for me, if he's given a chance, he is going to take it. Um, I personally think... We're going to wait a few games before he gets that chance. Even at Ranheim, it wasn't straight away. Um, like he wasn't selected straight away. Like I think until I think maybe week eight or nine of the season. So again, you've got to remember he scored 17 goals and he's not even played the full season for them, you know? So, you know, he's only been involved little, little times here and there, maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And then he's been given the 90 minutes and he's absolutely taken that opportunity. So he is going to be a player that, yeah, when he gets a chance, he's taking it. So I think he's going to have a good stay at Hibs. How long he's going to stay at Hibs, I, re- I, you know, I really don't know. Like the kid wants to play football, you know. Definitely. So, you know, and I think he's going to want to be in Europe as well. Um, but I mean, I think you, you'll get a couple of seasons out of him, you know. And I think we'll see him have a good, good stay at, um, you know, at Hibs. Um, and yeah, he's he is going to be that kind of player for you. So. Hopefully, we'll see him get a couple of starts and show us what he can do and give Nisbet something to think about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, go on. Sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to jump on a point you said there. It seems good that they sort of, you know, um, didn't chuck him in the deep end at um, Ranheim. They sort of just bled him and uh, put him in slowly, you know, 15 minutes here, 20 minutes there. 30 minutes. I think that's that he's already got that experience. Um I think that'll work well at Hibs. I think that's what Hibs yeah. do with them initially, you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, and then the, the, the minutes will start to gradually build up over the course of the, se- uh, the latter part of the season. Yeah. So I know as long as he's got that experience, I think that's, that'll set him in a good stead as well. Uh, because the thing is, you've got to bet him into the team. It's going to be a different way of playing football than he's used to in Norway. He's going to have different uh, mentalities and strategies flying around him. So he's got to have time to really absorb all of that and buy into the ethos at Hibs, you know. But I think a couple of things, you've got better training facilities at Hibs. 
So we're talking about push noise development. That's going to be a big factor. And then obviously the different um, types of pitches, that's going to be something for him to get used to. But again, it's going to be developing his game as well. So there's going to be a lot of development going on. But his raw talent is so great that I think he can still be effective um, at the very start. And like you say, give him 20 minutes here, put him on a bench and there's a time, you know, if he doesn't do well enough in training, like you're on the bench, mate. You know, like make him really, really fight for it, you know. And, you know, he's a, he he is hungry. He's hungry and he will be fighting for it. And he'll be looking at Nisbet. And yeah, like he'll I'm sure he got on with him wonderfully well and all that sort of stuff. But he'll be looking at how many goals he scored and he'll be thinking, Yeah, I've got a chance here. I've got an opportunity to come in and make a name for myself. And you know what? He is gonna he is gonna I was about to swear then, but he is gonna love the Hibs fans, like genuinely. You know, I love the Hibs community, like straight away. Like I posted that about Hibs and like my follow account went up from 120 odd to like nearly 800 in a matter of days, you know. So, you know, I definitely feel part of the Hibs community and I think he's going to be coming in and he is going to be welcomed. You guys like your youth. You guys like your, you know, up, you know upcoming players. And there's a lot of chatter on the Hibs Twitter, like, oh, he's the next Harland and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, he's going to be a fan favourite and he's going to be buzzing and I think that's going to push him on. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I think you're going to have a really, really good stay out of him. I think he's going to be doing a lot of, uh, you know... Well, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. Work. Yeah, I think, the, I think the thing that's probably really exciting for me is that the fact that we're playing in the Scottish Cup um, in a couple of weeks against Cove Rangers who are two divisions lower than us. So I think that's right, yeah. a game where we can expect to see him start and, you know... If it is getting 60 minutes under his legs, because we're mm. playing Celtic first game back after the winter break, and I don't think that's probably the, the best place to bleed them in straight away, but I think playing Cove Rangers, yeah. you know, a few days later, I think that's that's a great opportunity for him to, to you know, get some um, minutes under his belt and hopefully get a couple of goals as well. I'd love to see that um, him scoring at uh, Easter Road on his debut there would be class. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Um, I I think that that is a really good point. I think put, throwing him into that sort of game, um, it's you know, it's a knockout game. It's that kind of thing where your performance on the day really does matter. Um, and yeah, let, uh, let's not forget, he's not the biggest guy, but he's a very physical player. He's a very physical player. Um, he throws his weight around. He can bully defenders. It, it doesn't matter if you've got you know, a six foot two defender in front of him, he's going to be looking at that player and thinking, okay, you're big, you're slow, I can get in front of you. You know, yeah. that's the kind of player that he is. His positioning is absolutely fantastic. In and around the box, waiting for the ball to drop to him, making space where there isn't any. Um, so, yeah, I think against those kind of teams, he's definitely got a chance to, you know, go, you know, crazy. And I think yeah. um, against the lesser teams in the Scottish Prem, um, I think the same can be said as well. Um, like you say, Celtic, first game, it's not going to happen. You know, um, maybe he gets 10 minutes at the end. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm not even sure if he's even going to be in the squad for that game. But I think moving forward, yeah, as you say, bleed him in these cup games, bleed him against the like the lesser teams, you know, then he's got that chance to adapt early on. Because, you know, like the OBOS is not a poor league. The Elite Syrian is not a poor league, you know? and yeah, with every year that goes by, the biggest thing that changes in football is stamina and fitness. Yeah. And the thing is, when you look at these professional footballers, what they can do is absolutely amazing. Whether they're in League Two, whether they're at the, you know, whether they're in the second division in Belgium, you know, their actual level of skill is incredible. And I think the biggest thing that separates these players from one another as you go from league to league is stamina, fitness, and strength. And that's where I think Malkerson has a massive advantage. Because he's, he's extremely fit, he's extremely hardworking. He'll never stop running, um, and you know he's got the groundwork to really push on and you know like develop his game around those areas. Um, so yeah, so for me, I think the Scottish Prem is a fantastic league for him to join. Um, I think he's going to fit in. Um, he's going to be looking at it as you know it's not too different from playing in Norway, um, and yeah, um, you know I think. I think as well, the split will uh, probably favour him as well. Like, you know, when you okay. go to the top six and the bottom six, I think he'll get quite excited about that. I think that's going to be something that he'll look at and go, OK, actually, we've got a, we've got even more of a chance now to push on sort of thing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so, yeah, I think there's a lot of pluses 
I just think the biggest thing is give him time to get used to playing on natural grass. But, you know, at Easter Road, we've got hybrid turf. That's probably the best situation that you could have hoped for. So there's a lot of things lining up here, which says this is actually a fantastic signing. And uh, going back to what, uh, you know, what uh, Calvin said earlier about that link with uh, Glimt, I think you're spot on there. I think that's helped a lot. I think they've gone, yeah, you know what? This guy can do a job for us in Scotland for yeah. these reasons. Um, and he's going to be a really, really good shout. What, you spent 350 grand on him, 400 grand? Yeah, underscores what I think. So around that, around that sort, of, sort of price tag. If he's not worth like five, six, seven, eight million in the next couple of years, I, I, I will be shocked. And I know that's a big thing to say, but genuinely, genuinely, I, th- I think give him two years at Hibs and his profile is going to absolutely explode, you know. Um, and again, this may sound like hyperbole and it might sound like I'm getting carried away, but he is one of those players I genuinely think he's special. Just for his age, to do what he's done at Ranheim, um, it's just the mentality, guys. Like, it's the mentality when you see him on the ball, when you see him running into space, he's he's playing like a guy with the intelligence of a, what, like a 25, 26 year old. You know, he's he doesn't look like the normal 19 year old, as you say, picks the ball up out of the net, wants to get yeah. going again. You know, he's switched on, he's intelligent, he's clever, like, he wants to win, he wants to score. He'll pick the ball up 25 yards from goal, turn on it, and then shoot, and it might go over, but. He's that kind of player that's going to shoot like that because he thinks, nah, this this actually can go in. You know, he's that kind of player. You know, he can head the ball. Um, he takes penalties. Uh, you know, he can do overhead kicks. You know, he can drift in behind defences. He's got a lot, a lot going for him. You know, and underneath all of that, you've got a really industrious player, a really fit, hardworking player. Reminds me of Dirk Count. You know, uh, reminds me of Raw Strand in the sense of, you know, his his want to play football all the time and his fitness and his determination and he just doesn't stop moving. You know, he's all he's always hustling and bustling and doing something. Um, so, yeah, very much Dirk out Bobby Firmino kind of industry-wise, but then he's got the finish of a young, you know, Robbie Fowler, Michael Owen kind of player, you know. Um, but the fact that he can head the ball, overhead kick, do all sorts with it, you know, I think he's a special player. I really do. Well, I must say, you've got me absolutely buzzing. I'm really excited to see him play. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to, um, you know, getting down to Easter Road and seeing what he can do and being confident. As it. Certainly, everything you're saying is sounding exactly like what we've been missing from the team and mm. in, in, in the striking department. So I'm really looking forward to that. But just to wrap up, I'd just love to say uh, thanks very much for your time, uh, for coming on. Um, do you want to give a little shout out where people can find you on Twitter? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's just um, at, uh, well, I, I don't even know my handle, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's how much I care. <laughs> um, so, yeah, what am I? I am, yeah, it's just at reindeer hot dog. That's it, really. Um, I mean, I mainly tweet about Norwegian football, obviously. Um, but to be honest, um, I, I was talking to my dad about this the other day and he was like, well, it looks like you're going to have to jump in and do a bit of research into Scottish football and watch a bit of that. And I was like, I think I'm going to have to. Yeah, um, so, have yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely going to be following um, Hibs for the rest of the season, and, you know, pretty much from now on, I think. Um, yeah, I've even got them in my actual bio on Twitter. So, you know, you've got me. I saw that. I like that we addition. Yeah. I like that we addition. No, more than welcome. And um, you've had plenty of offers if you, if you make it up this way. I know, yeah. Get in touch and we'll, we'll, we'll get you along at a game. That would be really, really cool to see. Oh, definitely. That's that's definitely something that I was I was speaking to the missus about it and I was like, I think I'm going to have to go up to uh, up to Scotland. And the funny thing is, um, Edinburgh is one of my favourite places. I absolutely love it. I, I think it's absolutely beautiful. Like, genuinely, um, if I could live there, I would. But there's a few reasons why I can't. But, you know, a um, bit too far away from family. Uh, the girlfriend's very cold blooded, like she needs the sun, um, you know, but yeah, it's one of those places that I look at and go, oh, I, really, I really wish, you know, I could be up here. But I think the connection with him now is going to make me feel a lot happier to come up, go to a game, see everybody um, and obviously watch the kid play. You know, I think that's what we're all excited about, you know. Um, and obviously you've got other great signings coming through as well um, and obviously development on other players. But I think Malkerson stands out to me because obviously I, I have that affiliation with uh, Norwegian football. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, the Hibs fans, 
everybody on Twitter has been amazing. And I just want to take the time to say I really appreciate the support. Um, and everybody even just saying, look, come out, you've got a beer on me. Give us a shout, we'll take you out, all that sort of stuff. I've never had that before, and that 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 is amazing. Um, so already it's a special club to me um for, for the community, you know. Like I support AC Milan because I watched them on goals on Sunday when I was 14, you know. I support Rosenberg because I played them as you know on championship manager back in the day, the same sort of time. Uh, you know, I it's all about nostalgia and the connections that you have with the club. Um, and I think for me, I like to be as objective as possible because you know I like stats and numbers and data. You know, I don't join that you know like the emotional side of it. I can appreciate the uh, the emotional side of it, but for me, I, I like to be as on the fence as possible. Um, but yeah, straight away, Hibs, all that support and everybody like retweeting and commenting and liking everything. I just thought brilliant. They're the, they're the kind of people that. I would rather be spending my time with, you know, talking about football with um, than anyone else. Um, So, yeah, no, you're absolutely, absolutely bang on with that. Um, Love the community, really like where the club's going. Um, So, yeah, for me, I I will definitely be coming up to Easter Road at some point. And when I do, I'll let everybody know. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so we'll keep keep our eyes peeled on Twitter for you when you make the journey up. And uh, we look forward to to sharing your company and getting your insight into some... Uh, just to, just as long as everybody wears uh, like you know reindeer antlers, yeah, then that, course, that'll yeah. be great. You know, we can do that. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, no, it's been it's been really great chatting to you. Um, I really appreciate the offer to come on. Um, you know, again, it just sort of sums up you guys at Hibs, the community, just really welcoming, really supportive. Um, and you know that idea of you know wanting to know who you've signed, you know where he's come yeah, from, yeah. what he's about, and what you can bring to the club. Um, and I just I just feel really honoured that you've you know looked at what I've said and thought okay we can chat to him and actually get some kind of insight. Um, you know I, I don't consider well, myself well an expert. Worthwhile. Well worthwhile. It's been really good. I think yeah. the listeners who are obviously when when they listen to it, I think they'll really enjoy that and I think they'll be just as eager and keen to see uh, Elias in action as, as I am. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think moving forward, I'll be keeping an eye on him. I'll be keeping an eye on the whole team. Um, you know, and again hopefully in six months time you have me on again to either chastise me for being completely wrong or be like hey you were right all along you know so you know we'll see what happens with that um but yeah no i've 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 really enjoyed chatting to you um and yeah i i think we've got something good here um and yeah very excited to get back into the football and see him kick on um and obviously the idea is go to easter road see him play in the flesh and see him score a worldie from 25 yards out, like we all know he's capable of, you know, that would be fantastic. Or an overhead kick will do as well. But no, thanks very much Definitely. for coming on. And to, to the listeners, uh, thanks for listening. If you're excited, make sure you give uh, Reindeer Hot Dog a follow here so that you can catch up on all of his sort of analysis and data. It's fascinating, certain reading that you'll really enjoy it and you'll get, you'll get a really good insight into some of the players over there if you're interested in that type of football or... Uh, you can read his thread that he's got on Melkerson as well, which was really insightful. Um, but until next time... Oh, that's... Well... Hey,